So where is the difference as well? So when you are dealing with uh, asset management, configuration management, SAM, whatever, there is a life cycle. So in every case, you have plan, acquire, deploy, manage, dispose, and you have a bunch of things that goes around it. Okay. If you consider each of these stages, not all information is useful at every moment. So what I've developed, in fact, is something which is called the life cycle of attributes. So we have first to understand what is the life cycle for this customer. It may depend on the tool set you are using. And in my case, life cycle is critical for multi-tenancy. That means all customers have the same life cycle stages, and I can't do anything about it. I'm not allowed. When I say, oh, I want to change that, no way, because there is workflow attached to that, tons of things, and no way that we can change that. But you have to understand it. What you can do is that you can eliminate some of the stages which are confusing to you or of no value. And then you can build a, a flow chart that explains how your life cycle is understood and respected. What is the normal flow of information? So we start from ordered, go to received, inventory being assembled, deployed, end of life. Okay? In some cases, you can reserve things. Some cases, you can loan things. Some cases, we can transfer things, whatever. And in the end, we may have least systems that we need to return, other that we need to destroy or dispose. In that case, I have eliminated in repair down and deleted because uh, no one is going to provide me with this information. It doesn't mean we don't do that. It means that in this particular case, I have no connection with the people who are doing the repair and, and who, who could inform me about the status in repair and down. I have no information coming from them. So, as I have no control, I don't want that. So I just remove that. If somebody starts using your CMDB for asset control and they, they do, they, they're keeping track of the fact that the assets aren't being disposed at all, if somebody could have a scan in which he moves the stuff off to a pair, then takes it out of the building and sets it to somebody else. And they would have the illusion from looking at the CMDB that everything was perfectly okay, whereas because there was a status that was actually happening in the organization, which your CMDB didn't relate to. Now that would be because you, the scope didn't include that, that requirement. Yeah. But I thought that once that scan was discovered, it, even though it wasn't quote unquote your fault because it was outside scope, it would actually impact on the trust in the CMDB. Absolutely. So how do you manage yeah. that sort of thing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really have to, to take this in account. Mm. And, and that's a tricky thing because you will find always clever people doing things you couldn't imagine anyone who could be doing any time. But this happens. So it's, it comes down to, it seems to me that you always need a, a manual backup, somebody going and checking what the mm. CFDB is telling you, just to see if it makes sense on the ground. And then you notice that's part of the PC is recorded, nobody seems to know anything about. That's what we call uh, uh, audits, physical audits. Yeah. So what I wanted to say was probably the most important one, of the full speech can be used to this, is what I found when I talk about accuracy is really to make people understand what is important when and what is under change control, what is not under change control. And so that's an example, that's an abstract of the attributes we manage for a system. So that's an example. It's not complete, of course. So if I say, for example, what about the serial number? Serial number is the key. When do I know the serial number of a machine? Is it when I order it? No. Is it when I receive it? Oh, yes. This is written on the delivery receipt. Do I have someone who collects all the delivery receipts and make sure that the serial number which is written on it is the same as the one which is on the box which has been received? Is this delivery receipt? match with the information sent by the supplier, the vendor, 
And in the, this case, we have leasing. That means we have to allow in the leasing information with this information as well. But I found it was not done, obviously, this is customer. So I found that in the leasing uh, information from the vendor, we had duplicate serial numbers, since they pay several times for the same machine. They have no serial numbers sometimes, so no way to know which machine we are talking about. And all this kind of good stuff. And after this, all sorts of errors, because it was written manually. So sometimes, okay, typo, and all, all this kind of, any sort of things. So one first thing is, do you have a process around delivery receipts in your organization? If you don't, make sure you have one, because this is critical. When this error number will become really valid and official, it's when the inventory tool will give it to me. But the inventory tool will only happen uh, quite late in the, in the life cycle. Right? I have all this information here. I can say I can say anything about serial number. Could be anything. I have no way to control. Right? The machine is not connected. Once I know it, then for the rest of the life cycle, it should never change. If for some reason it changed, then something is wrong somewhere. But let's say, for example, as well, the domain name in Windows is only known the first time you have deployed the machine and it's given by the inventory tool. <coughs> then after this, it should normally not change, normally. Uh, for physical memory, uh, physical memory, you can know from the procurement people how much you have ordered. You can have someone verifying this information when they assemble the machine, just to make sure that it's not wrong. Because until then, here, the machine has maybe never been unboxed. So it's very difficult to know if we have the right amount of memory in the machine. The only time when the machine is unboxed is when it's being assembled. So at this stage, I need to have the people doing this, verifying this information. It should be made clear in that instructions, their procedures, that they need to verify this information and feedback this information to the asset team for verification. Then it's validated by the inventory tool. And if I need to change it, I would like to see a change request, telling me that we have ordered more memory. If I don't, this is an exception. So if I see that the, the, the amount of memory has changed and I can't find anywhere uh, a change request or a, a service request telling me that more memory has been ordered for this machine, this is something wrong. I need to chase what happened. I need to send someone on site and verify why this happened. Is your inventory tool good enough to distinguish between fast and slow memory? Because one of the things people used to do was to take out memory from machines high quality memory, put low quality memory back in. Yep. It looks the same from the inventory tool, because it's still yes. very much a memory. The machine That's gets fine. Right for me, this is very, very wrong, because uh, this, it, for this customer, the machines are, are leased. When they are sent back to the, to the leasing company, they verify if it's the same as it was when it was uh, ordered, or if we can trace any addition or modification or whatever. And if there is an exception, they send a bill for you to pay, no different. Yeah. It's not much, but that's a typical case, yes. People can decide to add more memory, to add more this. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing, they can add this memory from a machine they forgot to send back. Yeah. Which is somewhere under the, <laughs> the table. Yeah. Which is a problem we have with this leasing company as well, that people say, oh, it's the end of the contract, we need to send back the machine. I say, no, 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 I'm still using it. I keep it. I say, okay, fine. And then everyone forget about it, except that the leasing company, six months later, said, hmm, two machines missing, so here is an invoice. And the company pays, and everyone forgets about it. So when you, when you visit the, the different offices, you find machines everywhere. In covers, <laughs> no one, no one care. It's strange. Yeah. That's that's a, a very very bad situation. This is somewhere in the culture of the of the company, so it's very very difficult to change. 
It's a huge security problem too, because those machines contain data which don't use attacking any longer, so it's lying in the car that containing yeah. personal data. Yeah. So the point of this slide, in fact, is to understand. Do you understand that? Did, did you do this kind of exercise with your uh, configuration management database? Did you do this kind of thing? And it's, it's critical for our security as well. Because at some point, this is all about security. When you release a machine in the last phase of the, of the life cycle, in the end of life, are you really clearing information? Are you making sure that the disk is wiped and that uh, uh, everything is removed? Okay? Do you think about this? Do you have, you have these this things about? And you have automation in your CMDB that can tell you, oh, we forgot actually to wipe the disk. You have that? Think about it. That's the point, in fact, of my thing. See, if you really want to work on accuracy, you need to understand at this level of detail what's happening and what you can do if things go wrong, if the data is bad, how can you detect it's bad, and what can you do about it? And the other thing is, it's not only on inventory tools and automation, but also on manual information. Do you have a system that verifies daily that the data entered by the, de that the asset management team is valid and makes sense and is complete. And people forget some time about this. So it's, it's all nice with all this interface to uh, Landesk, CCN, whatever, Arteris, whatever. And you can put things very clever, managing duplicates, managing consistency, absence, presence, uh, baselining, and all this kind of stuff, which is electronic, but fine. But then what, what about the manual thing? When people modify things. Well, for example, if when in this life cycle here, all this is entered maybe manually. Do you have a, a, an interface with your procurement system? Maybe not. So it's all done manually. Do you have a system that controls this manual information? So just think about it. Right? 